there. You're not going to be up in the second floor. So whatever. So so that that's not a concern right now either. It, it has to be friable to cause a problem. There, there, there's no friability of the asbestos. And if there is if there's anything in the on that first floor that we're at that needs to be addressed, that that that's a very what they call a glove bang pretty easily. The mm -hmm. major concern is the mold the mold that's downstairs. Typically mold loves to eat paper. And and the first thing you do is you go and look at the, you go and look at the books and the books are not it's not it's not running off the books or the cardboard that you don't see it so you do have mold but it's not it's not to the point that what you need to do is you go in you take all the bird you take all the the flooring out and when you take the, the carpet out you're going to pull up tiles so you're going to have to take those uh, you're going to have to take out those tiles and abate the basement. That's included in the that's that's included in the numbers, and then then you get rid of all the paper. You and and not you don't worry about the stuff that's in the vault because that that's that's closed up. So that's not a problem. All the other paper, the boxes, people store things over the years. You take water infiltration, fixing the windows, pointing the bricks, and then you put in a couple humidifiers downstairs. And, and, and we're back in operation. I mean, it's going to be like $50,000, but you would be back in operation and you would have a healthy building because you wouldn't go back into the building until you went back and did some air sampling. And, and I, you know, it, it, right now, you're right. If you, if, you, if you go into the church next door, then you're going to spend 125000 or more, less, whatever, yeah. And but if you decide that that's where we need to go, then we're going to have to move out of there again. Mm -hmm. So, I, you know, I, I think, you know, people say that well, you put you put people into a building and you don't care because there's asbestos in the building. That's not true. It, it's right. You can go into any building. And I'm sure if you go into the, <laughs> you know, the Deerfield town office, you're going to have it there as well. So mm -hmm. I, 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 I don't believe that. I, I believe that we want to get our, we need to get our seniors back in, back in a building. Yeah. Does the, does, does the mold in a carpet in a floor that's not even used really impact the air quality from the, for the rest of the building? I think it, it might. Can. It, 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 it can. And, 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 but again, that's something that you want to take care of anyways, John. Yeah. yeah because, I, I it, because you, you maybe go back in and you got the building closed up, you know? So yeah, you want to take care of it. And, and, but, but you have, but you have to make the building watertight again. So we're not, we're not bringing in, and, 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 and but, but it's really, if you go and look at it, it's, you know, you got to clean it up. There's some, you know, there's some dead carcasses inside there. You got to clean up, and and it's going to take it's going to take a it's going to take an effort, but it can be done. And you I know? think it I really think we, can. Regardless of what we do, I think the town needs to make that building watertight. So we need, to, as I was talking with Chief, you know, we need gutters on the building. We need to do the windows in the basement, repoint the book the bricks you know take out any yep. carpet like regardless of what we do in the future that stuff all should happen anyways and so we can get moving on that and if there's some asbestos remediation we can do in the meantime it seems like that might be the best plan going forward versus doing the church next door just based on the cost and timing yeah i, I agree how long would it take i to agree do, how long would it take to take these steps I, I don't, I don't I have no idea. I'm not a, I don't, I don't know. I don't know who, you know, what the lead time I, is for the, you know, for a contract I, to do that stuff. I think, yeah, I, I think you, you could, you know, you could call, you could get in someone like Compass Restoration or, or Abide or, or a lot of these places that do, do mold remediation and stuff. I, it, you know, they, but it, they can't do it. Let's put it that way. It's not like it's going to take forever to get it done. Right. Okay. Well then, I mean, if, if that's the, it sounds like that's the direction of the board. Again, the only way I'm doing it is if, 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 if we create a, a timeline for getting out of that building as quickly as possible. Um, 
and 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 building something new or or doing whatever we need to do for something permanent because I I know that you know I I don't want to be there permanently at, at all. Um, it's a it's a it's a stopgap. I I you know I wish that we had had this. I, I wish that we had, we had had the people walk through it uh, a few months ago. Um, but can Trevor, I guess the ball's in your court, how quickly you can get a, a mitigation company in there to, 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 you know, well, have building, have your building and buildings guy figure that out. Yeah. You know, and there's, and, and, you know, the town is trying to figure out as a whole, what we do with these, these spaces as well. So I think, um, you know, I think I need my meeting tomorrow and then, um, and then, you know, John, do you want to pipe in a bit on, on, you know, where, what the direction that, that we're trying to move in is? I mean, there, there's this as place for the seniors. And then we also have, you know, larger projects we're trying to figure out and playing chess with the different buildings in space, um, has been a challenge. Um, and we can get started to figure out what that, what that takes and who would do it and, and all of that. Um, you know, w one thought we had er early on is that we would, you know, rehab the church if we thought it was affordable and this have a, have a permanent place for the seniors for, you know, temporary permanent place for the seniors while we, um, while we gutted the senior center and turned it into a town hall and take down the town hall and build a new senior center. You know, that that was one avenue um, that, we're, you know, domino effect that we were looking at. But, you know, again, that's that's that if we just rehab the building for the place for the seniors, then it really kind of messes up that hopscotch. So none of this is set in stone. We need town meeting approval. We need money. You know, they're all of that stuff. But I that's think a, that's a several year project, Trevor. Yes, it is. But that's why we're hoping the senior, you know, the senior center next door. I mean, this church next door was going to be viable because it, it then it allowed us some space, some breathing room. But if that's not a viable thing for us, you know, if it's a hundred thousand dollars that we'd just be taking down eventually, then it doesn't make any sense. We would just re rehab the place. And then, you know, but then what do we do for a senior center? Again, we're back to like, what do we do for a building? Um, so and, and, and a space and, for a building is and again to that's out. where I, I I don't want and and again we don't have a, a ton of time today but I don't want us to start thinking about building a building until we do the needs assessment exactly I, I agree with that and and so you know we can talk about renovating and 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 de demoing and but if we don't know what we want it doesn't matter. Yeah, but well, we're going to need a space for it, whatever it is. Well, of course, right. But but you don't know whether the footprint would be large enough or you don't, you know, it, it's just so many unknowns. There is, there is. It's been very uh, frustrating. But before that, we have to address the initial problem right now. Mm -hmm. The tent goes down October 31st. What's going to happen November 1st? That's where I think, I think regardless... Regardless, we, we should talk with the with the um, with the with the Catholic Church, and and I think that's a great generous offer for for a few short months while we figured this out. Because I'd hate to get to that point where no, but I mean I can't see November first. All the remediation is done, and I mean it just takes time for all that stuff to happen. So I, I think if we could buy a couple of months. I'm oh, sorry, I missed that, Sue. Go ahead again. I said I agree, but yeah. uh, if we can buy months, yep. we have a little bit more leeway because the, the work on the church started way too late. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've known about these problems for a long time. And yeah. now that it's cold, all of a sudden, oh, oh we got to find a place. Yeah. What's, well, the, um, what's the kitchen facility like in the... In the uh, there's a kitchen. It is. Yeah, is the only... The only thing father said that is you'd have to have somebody serve safe and have to have um, um, the liability um, insurance. Um, and the cook from life path is serve safe. Mm -hmm. uh, they all have to, they have to be anyways. Um, the, the, does the, does it have the capacity for food storage and all that kind of stuff? So 
it, it they do. He he was just um, he said that's fine. They have two two really big refrigerators in there. Um, I'm trying to remember exactly. They they yeah. do have some refrigeration that we could use. I mean, we our meals come in in the morning. The cook, um, you know, doesn't cook them. They're already prepackaged. She pre packages them up. Yeah. And get them ready. So we'd only need the refrigeration for like a couple hours in the morning. Each right. morning. Oven space. About what? Oven space. Um, we don't use the oven. So you don't? Okay. No, we don't have to because the meals are already prepackaged. What she does is just puts them together right now okay. um, until we stop the grab and go meals. I mean, we, we don't even know when we can start having congregate meals again. Right. 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 So that all depends on with COVID. And, you know, if we could have congregate meals again, that would be wonderful. Yes. And they have the facilities to do it. I mean, the, the church hall is very big. Yeah, yeah it is big. So I, I would like to propose that we do this. Um, we take father up on his offer. Um, we, we run the, 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 uh, traps of, uh, making sure that they have the liability, liability, uh, paperwork done, et cetera, whatever they need, get that done as quickly as possible so we can get the seniors in there, maybe in the next couple of weeks. Um, and, and Trevor, in the meantime, you maybe work with your building guy to, um, start the, start the mitigation process about, um, with, with the current senior center building with the whatever Tom mentioned, and I'm sure Tom can put it, put it down on paper pretty easily. Um, and then the third step would be, uh, and we haven't heard from John about the uh, assessment piece yet, um, but we, we, we cannot, what, what always happens is we get, we get comfortable and then we, then we forget about the long term. Um, and, and so the third piece to this, to this three-legged stool would be to, as quickly move forward as possible on whatever we can on the assessment. And then we can fill in the gaps on, on whatever assessment can't happen because of, of capacity issues. John, what's going on with the assessment? I've been playing phone tag back and forth. So um, I plan to make some movement on that this week. And I think, you know, my intention is to expedite that in case he's back from vacation. I just want to work out a couple of the language issues. Uh, Jeff was kind enough to, uh, to tear into it for me. So I'm trying to work out some language issues there. And once we uh, get those resolved, then hopefully we can send it over, make sure the Board of Oversight's comfortable with it, have Casey sign off on it and get it moving. The timeline, um, I'm not crazy about. It does push things out pretty long term, which I don't know if you noticed, but it literally pushes a final report out to about a year from now, which I'm hoping for a final report in four to five months. So that's, uh, that's something I've got to talk to her about and see if there's a way to expedite this process and work right into the feasibility side of it. So I, I'll do the best I can. Yep. I don't understand, John, and forgive me for, for my lack of understanding, but I don't understand why an assessment takes four to five months. Uh, nor do I, but I don't know how busy they are, how much resources they have. And okay. when they start scheduling meetings in multiple towns to hear from multiple people and they send out mailings and they take the mailings back and they send them out to a, a certified center to be interpreted and get the results back. I mean, you know, it, easily that can take three to four months. So, you know, it does take some, some time. I was hoping it did not take a year. So I'm not crazy about the timeline, but that's yeah. something I'm going to talk to her about. Yeah, because honestly, again, my, my opinion, and, and, and not Trevor or Tom's, but my opinion is a year really doesn't do us that much good. Yeah. We also need to, we also need to fund a lot of this stuff. You know, I mean, it's right. It's and and, and, it's and so the timing, the timing needs to sync with town meetings and, and, and we need to sell this before town meeting. We can't, don't think we can go into, well, here's our assessment. Here's our feasibility. Now town meetings, you go do it. We got to sell this thing like we sold scams a dozen years ago or however long it was. Yeah. So I think if we can get the feasibility study up and running, I would look for money at annual town meeting to come up to 25% design. And then I would do a 
fall special town meeting in all three communities with a singular focus on the senior center. That would be my vision, but certainly, you know, I, uh, I lean back on all of you. Can, can you do three town town meetings or does it have to be individual? That'd be fun. Huh? Ooh, depends, on, de- <laughs> depends on, depends on how it's set up. Yeah. It depends on the bylaws within you your can, community. If you have to have it within your community, if you don't, you could technically have it in a surrounding town. But, but you know, Jonathan, that's not the, worth the headache. The, the, <laughs> I, I would, I, I mean, I think if you're looking again, how are you going to pay for the building? Is it going to be the three towns are going to be like frontier? We're we going to have a, a mm-hmm. or, or so we have to start thinking about that or it's a town of Deerfield um, or Sunderland or Whiteley. If we choose a building, one of those communities, communities, are they going to pay for it? And then they're going to rent it back to the senior center. How is that? You know, we have to discuss that. Yes. And I would, I would assume that it would have to be discussed in the assessment also. Right. And, and yeah, I'm not sure any citizen from any community yeah. is going to be interested uh, very much so in paying for a building in another community in whole up front. Yeah, that's 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 a lot of money. I mean, let's say we put it in Waitley and Sunderland and Deerfield are going to put up three million dollars for uh, a four million dollar building and Waitley's putting up a million dollars. That is going to be an extremely hard sell. I think you structure it like Tom noted that basically one community builds the building and then there's an assessment to all three towns, almost like we set it up with scams. Yep. And, and I, but I, but I also think John, if we're going to do that, we need to look out, we need to talk to our surrounding communities, Leverett and Conway and, and, and see if they have, if there's interest in them, you know, going in with us if they want to be yeah. if they want to be part of that also it's a good thought sure we did uh conway had zero interest we did reach out to them uh probably six months ago and conway's very uh split because a lot of people go to the shelburne buckland senior center uh some people go to greenfield and a couple go to the uh the deerfield south county center right yeah i think you would have to look at at, at, at leverett Shootsbury, but my guess is Leverett goes to, to Bangs. Yeah, at a certain point, uh, you know, Leverett may go right up 63 to the brand new Irving Senior Center. Right, or they could go down to Amherst. Yeah. You just don't know. Um, okay. All right, John, keep us posted on what you hear back in terms of the, the, the timeline on the assessment, but, but I personally, I think you can say, well, if it's going to take a year, thanks, but no thanks. It just doesn't yes. do it. for the for the money we're spending. We're spending good money in a time frame that just doesn't work for our purposes. Yes, I will. Uh, I will continue to push forward with uh, with building issues and the needs assessment. And we we haven't funded any of these repairs to the building either, so we got to figure. You know, we have we have to figure that out as well. So, well, there's a couple questions I have. Number one is if we reach out to our insurance company and mention that uh, we've suffered water damage this summer during multiple storms in the basement, are we covered? We have certainly done that. Okay. So if the answer is yes, can we get in there? Um, no, with we the haven't done company that, Trevor. No, what I'm yeah. saying is we have not done that. We, what, I'm saying we is that we have, what I'm saying is that we have gotten a ton of water this summer. I'm not saying we reached out to any insurance companies or anything. I'm just saying that we have gotten a ton of water this summer. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Yeah. So and if, the, if the insurance company would bring in a mold and mildew mitigator and do that work on our behalf, that may be a way in which we have it funded. It's just a thought and a possibility. The second part of this is I've got to talk to Casey to look at what the wording of our warrant article is because I don't remember for special town meeting if it is specific to the church and then if we are going to take that article and divert it towards the existing senior center also known as the old elementary school is it legal to do so on town meeting floor to amend that article to an entirely different building I'm not sure as though that passes the sniff test it doesn't John yeah that's what I figured so we didn't 
we we noticed to the public that we were talking about the church, not the yes. senior center. Um, yeah. The other piece is, is I know from past experience that the insurance company is going to allocate us up to twenty five thousand dollars for the claim for mold remediation. I don't know that they will address asbestos. I've never asked that question, and that's if they approve the claim. Right. Well, right. But 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 if you if you if you heed Tom's comments, um, yeah. and I think we're wise to asbestos is not something that we need to worry about right away. No. And and I and I would I would you'd have to, jo so Jonathan, you'd have to worry about the, the asbestos floor tiles that came up when you pulled up the uh, the carpet in the basement. Yeah. You yeah. would have to worry about that. And that will happen. Yeah. Yeah, very absolutely. likely it will. Oh no, you, it, 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 I, oh no, it will. No, no question. Matter of fact, and that and that's what that's what um, when when the gentleman came in with me, that's the first thing he said. You pull up the carpet, the uh, tiles will come up. So that in that his cost, he was figuring that you would have to uh, that was included the asbestos abatement of the floor tiles. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. And I'm assuming once you touch one tile, you have to touch them all. No, you, no, it, no, it, the, no. what, what you have to do is you have to, you have to replace the tiles that are damaged. So if something, but he would say just, it'd be a lot easier just so you go through and just replace everything. So if you had a broken tile, you can replace that broken tile. If you had six broken tiles, you replace six broken tiles. But when you pull up the floor, you're probably going to have multitude and it's just better just to do the whole thing all at once. I got you. Okay. Are you talking about the tiles on the second floor or on the first floor? First basement basement uh, in, in the basement, basement. the basement uh, the floor in the base yep. is is concrete under the there's carpet. tiles on i believe there's tiles on that too i don't remember tiles in there i could be wrong but i've been there for a I, long I, time I, I know there's carpeting but i don't I know think, what carpeting yeah but. i think the car i think when you, i think when you look at it you can see you can actually see the uh you can actually see the uh, outlines of uh, tiles underneath the carpet. Basement. I think uh, there also is um, the yeah. tile kitchen on the on the main floor. That mm -hmm. was not redone in the kitchen. the The big room and yep. the other room. Yep. Um, so I don't. I, so I was trying to figure yep. out which tiles you were referring to. Yeah, he's talking about the basement only because there, there, the there will come up. Okay. Yeah, I, I just remember and, it. And, and on, on the on the main on the main floor in the kitchen, we there there may be a couple tiles that need to be replaced, but as long as long as the tiles as long as the tiles are are in place, they're not moving and they're not broken. They don't need to be replaced. Okay. Okay. All right. So, is, is, is are you guys are Trevor and Tom? Are you guys in agreement that those three steps? You know, go talk to father. Well, uh, yes, Sue can do that, and and work yes, with absolutely. Um, I just have no money for any repairs in that building. That's my my issue, right? Right, right. and no way to fund it because our annual so, meeting is on the fourth, and we can't use the money that you yep. set aside. And that's why. Go ahead, Tom. And, and that and that's why Sue Sue talking to uh, the church is a great thing. Yes, we go in there for at least a couple months, and, and it buys some time for the town. And, and us to figure out what we're going to do. If we're going to the church next door, we can't do anything with it. Fine. We cross that off the table. We go out. We, we ask a couple of companies to come in and give us a, uh, a quote on, on what it would take for remediation of the basement and, you know, clean everything up the mold. Then, then, then the town can go to town meeting with some, with some acronym numbers say, okay, this okay. is going to last us for two years so that we can, we can get things, you know, back running, and 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 start the planning for the long term facility for the senior yeah. center. Okay, that's a plan. All right. Yeah, I think and 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 it may not may not be what people want to hear, but I think that you know even the two years I think is, you know I look at our senior housing in Sunderland and and I would say, boy, I would have thought the studs would already be up, but they're they're basically just coming out of the ground now. So yeah. you you know construction takes what it takes. It does. Yeah. But you know John John. Um, Chief John's suggestion about entertaining a, a, an architect and take it either to 10% or 25% design is an excellent idea. 
if you can, if you can kind of have an idea where you would think about putting it, Trevor, mm-hmm. and you could you could engage an architect at ten and take it to ten percent or twenty five. Actually, that that kind of does the assessment also, and in, in for us about what because a, a good architect is going to talk talk to people and want to know what's going to be in. So he could listen to what if we hold some community hearings would actually listen to what people are talking about, and and that would kind of be telling us what we need to put into that facility. And, it's a, and it is a great way to start. Right. And, and Trevor, is it safe to assume that Deerfield Academy is not going to get rid of their temporary buildings anytime soon? Uh, I don't, what temporary buildings? I don't think they have any. I thought they had some temporary buildings that, that were on. I think they got rid of everything. Replacement at some point. Yeah, um, no, they still have them. They um, mm-hmm. they said they were going to cycle them out five or ten years ago. However, they keep reusing them. They commonly call them the mods, the modular buildings. Okay, yep, they're on the them. east side of campus, right along the huge shrub line, um, right near the farm stand. So, oh, oh, and okay. they're still using those. There is uh, there's word out there that they may be putting additional buildings back there, so they may be coming out, Jonathan. But I would absolutely not hold your breath on any part of that. Okay. I just thought so yeah yeah I the other thing I want to caution Sue on is I know the church mentioned something about a donation and I would check with Casey on that because as part of the accounting rules that we have to follow and when Tommy Scanlon's office walks in the door we have to be very careful we cannot give a donation and the church is a nonprofit. the church has a right yep so the church can't really send us an invoice per se. So it kind of leaves us in somewhat of an awkward situation. We also want to be careful about sending a donation to a, to a religious institution. Just correct. Well, that's why the, hence the contract that would have to be worked out. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe a short term rental. Yeah. Because they do rent the hall for other functions. So there we go. Yeah. yeah, that's probably yeah. the best way to do it. So yeah. you, instead of a donation, you can do it as a uh, rental, you know, yeah. rental. A temporary yep. rental. Contract. Make sure you're touching base with Casey so we keep it under the procurement rules, because once it gets over a certain amount, we're then required to put it out for procurement for temporary space. Right. Right. Casey and I talked about this yesterday regarding... Okay. This. All right, um, you guys. I, I know to some get of the hard stops, so I'm gonna I'm gonna call this meeting to to its end, um, yep. and I will schedule one for. I'd like to schedule one in the next couple of weeks to make sure that we're all moving forward. Um, does two? I know two weeks. Sue can do what she's she's doing. Trevor, can you can you get some stuff done in the next two weeks? I think so. I mean, we'll try. Yeah, we'll give it a try. And John, you can probably make some some headway with at least information gathering in the next two weeks as well, correct? Absolutely. Okay. All right, you guys. Meeting adjourned. Thank you very much.